Well, hello there everyone, Spider VM here, and today I'm gonna be doing a playthrough of Forgotten World, the Genesis version, but on hard difficulty. And now we're setting the difficulty to, ha to hard, and then the satellite speed to fast. Now the, the weird thing about the satellite in this game is the turning around of the satellite has momentum. But turning around, on the other hand, turning around the, the satellite takes too much time. So if you do it fast, you need to be more advanced. Uh, that's because when you depress the button, the satellite still goes a little bit and just slows down before stopping completely. So you could easily overshoot it. Now what is the easiest difference between uh, normal mode and hard mode? Primarily two things if I understood the game correctly. Uh, there are generally more moves as you can see here. And then you're, you also take way more damage. And so if you don't get hit then it's nearly hard mode is not really that big of a problem. Okay now we're on the shop. Now, in my opinion though, uh, first, um, I'm gonna have some pretty specific purchasing decisions. Like for these two weapons, uh, we have the missile or the 8-way laser. Uh, for me, for a lot of people, it's a wiser decision to buy the missile. But for me, I'm gonna pick the 8-way fire weapon because it actually allows you to kill the bosses much, much faster. I also bought the, the potion because that allows us to resurrect. Uh, if you're an expert to this game, one is enough, two is basically safe, three is for if you want to be like to be make sure that you do not get a game over. And as long as you are careful, you can finish hard mode uh, only using one resurrection potion. Uh, now we are on the part with the gears and there, we can get a lot of zen here and surprisingly Yeah, if you're using the missile here, you're gonna have a lot of problems destroying those gears Well, if you have the eight directional weapon, it's a lot easier Yeah, as you can see here, we killed the boss so fast. The boss wasn't even done preparing its weapons to stop you, and it's already gone. And also, as you can see here, if we kill the boss early, we get a Zenny bonus. So sometimes, well not sometimes, it's actually a very good idea to get a weapon that would defeat the boss much faster. If you are trying to save Zenny by just, you know, keeping... Inefficient weapons, the problem is you're not gonna get any Zenny bonus. That's even worse. Because that Zenny bonus will pay for the weapons. Okay, now we're on the second shop, or the second level. Now, we do have other weapons here. Uh, although, uh, the, the new weapon here, the napalm here, is actually decent. I would still keep the 8 directional weapon because the weakness of the boss and the way it attacks allows us to use the 8-way direction to kill the, boss, to, to kill the boss even faster compared to even the newer weapons. And the reason I did not buy the armor is because of this. You could actually pick up a free armor in this level. So it would save us Zenny if we did not buy the armor. Okay, on this point, we should be wary about the worm in the sea. That is pretty annoying. It would surprise you. So the easiest way to avoid that uh, that enemy, which you cannot defeat, is to just keep moving. 
Of course, if there's a lot of enemies going in your way, that's gonna become a problem, but it's the best way. You could potentially avoid those enemies or accidentally defeat them while just moving about. But if you keep stay in one location, the worm will get you. And it hurts a lot, especially on hard mode. Now here comes the dragon boss. Again, we're gonna aim the satellite directly at the weak point of the boss. And the boss just summons a little some minions and then throws out its fire, but it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna keep on focus firing it until we destroy the chest and then the heart and then defeat it fast. As you can see here. Okay, now we're in the third stage. Now, on this stage, my plan is to actually change the weapon. But the, the weapon that I will be changing it, I will probably keep it until the end of the game. Because my goal is to get all of the upgrades possible in the final level. And I'll also, on the weapon shop, I will also explain why I did not pick the laser weapon. Although, in theory, it should be the better weapon. Okay, so now, why would I pick the flamethrower over the laser weapon? For me, I'll use the flamethrower because, again, um, it's actually way a way better weapon to use to defeat the boss in this level. And then, although in the other levels the laser is actually better, the problem is there is actually a boss that is immune to lasers much later in the game. If we keep using this flamethrower, we have a weapon that may not be optimal for the other few levels, but would be very, very good on the second to the last boss in the game. Okay, now we're in the part of the level where there is a lot of obstacles that you can destroy for a lot of zenny. Uh, if you use the laser here, this would be okay. But if you actually use the flamethrower here, it's a lot easier because uh, the, the, the flamethrower has a weird uh, hitbox that, that it actually kind of passes through a lot of obstacles. So as you can see here, the flamethrower goes through any destructible terrain, which means making this... Uh, Zenny blockages to be a lot easier to destroy and get the Zenny from them. Okay, now we're on the boss of this level. Okay, this boss has actually has a decent number of attacks, but with the weapons we have, we should be able to easily defeat it. Now, the first attack is the arms here, as you can see here, and we need to defeat both the the boss's shoulders so we could so, it, it, so the hands won't bother us anymore after defeating the shoulder the boss would again still keep using its eye lasers but if we position our character like here we could be able to defeat it well with no risk of, of that boss's laser eyes hitting us
Now, we get on the weapons here on the shop. Now, um, in my opinion, the Vulcan is a really, really good. But unfortunately, if we buy the Vulcan here, we're going to have problems in the final levels because we won't have enough money to buy all of the upgrades. So unfortunately, I will keep the Flamethrower here. Now, there's another weapon here, the Bouncer. It's okay, but... Uh, on certain levels, it's basically a weak turret. Well, on the other levels that have walls, it's decent. But then we need all the upgrades on the final level, so we're not be changing the weapons here. You know, surprisingly, okay, these are the hard enemies here, which I consider to be the easiest enemies in this level. If we get, if you get a route that has those enemies exclusively, remember that route because it is really, they are really easy to destroy if you if you just aim correctly. Okay, now we are facing the first boss here, the head. Now, uh, the only attack this thing has is just uh, when it's on the same level as you, it would fire on its mouth. So just avoiding the same level would be enough. Twist around and fire on it. Then once the head is destroyed, the second phase of the boss will happen, which is the really long worm. And it, it has, to be, has no attack. It will just keep dashing at you. So just keep circling, avoiding it while changing your satellite position to defeat it. Uh, as long as you have flamethrower or a weapon that could pass through the boss, this would make short work of the boss. Okay, now we're buying another max life and then the booster and although we do have the money for the new weapon here the wave weapon i am not really gonna buy it although it is actually kind of decent uh what we're aiming for is the final level in which we absolutely need to get all of the upgrades At this point though, I'm kind of surprised that we actually got the best route. Uh, it's the route that we're not be fighting those like 
shooting star scenes because I think it's the most annoying enemies in this game. I think I should remember this path. If I remember correctly, the path that I did is in the previous level, it was up and up, and then in this level, it was up and down. I guess I really need to remember that. Uh, now for this boss, uh, for me the strategy that I do is just like brute force killing this boss. Well, because the AI of this boss is pretty simple. If you go too much near it, uh, the there would be something that would be blocking you from getting in. So the theory, the best idea that I could think of is just go as near as I can so that my satellite weapon could actually hit it while also hitting with my normal weapon. And just, you know, just tank the hit and kill the boss as fast as I can. So we're now on the heaven level and uh, it was kind of fortunate that we almost almost died there but surprisingly we survived there and fortunately the beginning of this level has a lot of secret items that actually refill our HP so that's good. There is also the cow icon there that gives us I think about 10,000 Zenny which is very important for saving our Zenny for the best upgrades in the game. Yeah, that's the funny advantage of using the flamethrower. It actually slows the game down. Anyway, we're in the shop again. We're, we're buying the special armor. Otherwise, we're probably not gonna survive this. Now, we have the new super beam here. And we can afford it, but we're not gonna do it. This is the reason why. As you see, it said that the boss is actually immune to lasers. So why would we suffer ourselves? And then we have a fire weapon, which I think is one of the biggest uh, weaknesses of this boss on this game. So why change it? Although we're still like using the weapon from the third stage, it's giving us plenty of uh, value for the money. Now we are on the part that is kind of annoying, you know, the normal enemies, the one that is floating with the gray costume, they're kind of okay. But the armored ones, oh, they're much more annoying because they circle you much faster. And then there's this giant here that throws something from their mouth. And uh, I was only, only able to defeat this like giant guy thing on its second appearance. On the first appearance, I am too busy trying to survive, trying to kill all those flying guys just to survive. But for me, on the first part, just trying to survive, kill the kill the mooks, and then when on the second appearance, I'll focus his iron on it to try to kill it. And now, here is the boss of this level, and due to our satellite and firepower we have, we are killing this boss so fast, it's, 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 it has a roundabout from not funny to funny again. And it's probably because it's fire and our satellite weapon could kill, could go through the boss.
And now we're in the final level and our goal right now is to just survive until we get to the shop and then get the best weapons in the game. Look at that third thing just throwing everything at me, you know? And the, be the least that I could do is just not to get hit and get some few hits in and hopefully kill it. Because even if you actually don't kill it, it would just actually leave on its own. Now we have this little little crannies here and actually if you actually go to the top part and shoot it you would actually get 10,000 denies so it's very very important to immediately get those and leave because you get squished on the side you'd actually get some damage but it's not that big but it's you know surviving is the most important. So we're now on the final shop we're gonna buying the homing laser and then buying also buying the aura weapon. This actually increases our firepower while also healing. And then, unfortunately, we still don't have enough money for the last booster upgrade. And we're not gonna be buying an armor. Why? You'll see later. As you can see here, there's a pick up for an armor there. It's a free armor. So why buy the armor for 5,000 Veni when you can get an armor for free? And now we have enough Denny for the last upgrade and then we have this like yes 99900 that actually just increases your score by a whole lot if you want to do like a really nasty one just for to suffer just for the score fine but for me I'm not gonna do that <laughs> And here comes the final boss. Now on this part though, uh, he cannot actually be hit. He'll just using this like, I don't know, some sort of projectile. And fortunately their bullet pass is pretty predictable. Which means in order to avoid that, just be on the lower right side, on the right side of those creatures. And then on the left side, you keep it on the left, the lower left. 
You know, the more complicated part is the one when they are in both walls. So you should angle your shot so that you would be able to hit those projectiles that are coming straight at you. And then, once the ball started to fly, uh, you could actually bid him by moving left to right. Uh, because if you keep uh, stationary, the dual projectiles will actually hit you. When you're going forward and backwards, your angled shots would actually hit those boomerang things. And then, it's, it's another attack, it's the laser. Which is, again, you need to move in order to somehow avoid it. And now the boss is dead. Wow, our upgrades are so full that we killed the boss so, so freaking fast. And that is actually the game. Wow, uh, the boss died so fast. Wow, that's not even funny. It's almost pathetic. But anyway, yeah, that is the playthrough for Forgotten World on hard difficulty. Now, it looked like the game is too easy. I mean, I didn't even die once, but then I think I just consider this one to be pretty... Pretty lucky. Uh, we almost died in a few times and we're just lucky that we were able to beat the, the boss first before the boss got to us. Anyway, and we got all of the needed final upgrades just to beat the uh, boss really easy. And that's probably the reason we won fast. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching this playthrough of Forgotten Worlds. I have really enjoyed this playthrough because it's one of those games that I've been playing. I haven't been playing this game for like how many decades now like more than a decade and uh, i just you know what i did first is i finished normal charted a task for the for the hard difficulty and just did it and recorded this video so i just replayed the game twice and yeah i mean that's a pretty good run anyway this is rider vm hope you have enjoyed that playthrough if you did uh please subscribe to my channel so you could watch other obscure and forgotten games I just did. So anyway, I hope that I will still see you guys in another video.